Hey everyone, Humphrey here again with Router Gods and continuing on our series of becoming a pre-sales or systems sales engineer. And one of the questions I get a lot is people want to know the exact path on how to go from network engineering or tech support into SE. And there's no exact path, but what we can do and what I highly recommend is that you leverage a site like LinkedIn and you pick, you find a couple SEs and you take a look at their, their job path. What were they before being an SE? How many years did they do it? What projects did they work on? That way you can get a sense of kind of what a, what a typical or what an average path to becoming an SE is like. So in this video, it's we're gonna take you through, I'm gonna pick five people by random just off the top of my head, five people that I know that are currently SEs for either Megacorp, Cisco, or for other companies and we'll take to see we'll look to see if there's any commonalities if any, any skills or schools degrees or anything like that so let's get down to it this is going to be pretty fun and actually before i dive into it we'll start with our disclaimer router gods this channel everything that i say is not necessarily that of my employer there are my own words and my own opinions done all right so first of all, I guess it should be appropriate. We'll pick myself, right? Now, never use me as a template because I am so far out of the norm for anyone that, uh, that it's probably not good. So we'll, we'll take a look at uh, Humphrey here. All right. So you scroll down, you know, you're looking at someone, you scroll down into their experience and their education. So we're gonna be looking at a couple things here. We're gonna be looking at education. We're gonna be looking at experience. And when we're talking about experience, we're looking for number of years, the positions, and the projects. So years, positions, projects. And we're also gonna be looking for kind of the, the outlier things, that, you know, any hobbies, any other achievements. All right, so education, experience, hobbies, achievements, kind of in, in that order. Okay, so going back to myself, we'll go down here to education. <laughs> so I went to UCLA. I never graduated because I, uh, around that time, a co couple years in, two or three years in, the dot-coms were, were booming. There was Red Hat. There was... Uh, Net zero, the, all, all the dot coms were happening. That was the prime time. And so I got hired at Net Zero, and Net Zero was based in the Valley, Calabasas, Thousand Oaks, that area. So I had a choice make money, get my stock options at Net Zero, have a chance to make it big, or stay in school. And I knew that if I stayed in school, I would miss that wave of, of dot com. So I, I dropped out, I, I quit, and never looked back. And so far, it really hasn't hurt me at all and it's it's been okay but I do have a two-year degree a two-year degree from San Bernardino Valley College in something completely different so this is administration of justice I went through two police academies once again that's why I say I'm, I'm the atypical person so I have a two-year degree I've done other stuff as well but as far as education is concerned yes I've gone to a big name school UCLA is one of the top ranked uh, schools in, in the US and probably around the world, but I didn't graduate. And actually, if you're going into the IT field, that's not that big of a deal. Uh, so if you've gone to a Stanford, if you've gone to a Harvard, or if you've gone to a UCSD or USC, but you didn't complete all four years, it's not that big of a deal. Now, this is regionally dependent. What I have noticed in Singapore is in Singapore, the education, the degree, the school that you come from matters a lot, uh, especially in the early years. Uh, in the U.S., not so much. We, we celebrate, we all almost celebrate people quitting school, uh, to, which I guess is okay. If you make it later in life, then who cares? Uh, but in Asia, if you quit school, it looks pretty bad. So once again, regionally dependent. So for education, we'll put here the AA degree, two years. Then let's take a look at the experience. Now I have, I have reporting experience, so that means public speaking is good. I have systems engineer, network engineering experience for, for several years in, in multiple places. 
UCLA, all that good stuff. I also have tech support. So I have, if we add up the, the totals for everything, I probably have around two to three years of tech support and about three to four years as a network engineer. And I do have some managerial experience. And um, yeah, so we'll say it's probably more like five to six years. So five to six years as a network engineer and around, we'll call it three years of tech support and some other stuff as well, reporting and stuff like that. So this is actually pretty typical of the number of years for tech support and network engineer before becoming an SE. Okay, so that's me. We'll pick on someone else here. Let's do <laughs> Stefan Lich. It's gonna be surprised I'm picking on him, but um, let's take a look at good old Stephen Lynch here. Okay, we'll start with the, the education. Let's see where he went to school here. Okay, where did he put his education? So he has a BS degree in IT. Okay, cool. So BS, IT. Network engineer, look at that. Network engineer for five years. Solutions architect, so he's already, he's did some pre-sales before, so five years, and he has some instructing experience, about six years, eight years. We'll call it eight years. Okay. So eight years IT instructor. And I also have that. I did that for about four years. CCNA, MCSE, A+, plus, blah, 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 all that stuff, right? So eight years IT instructor. IT instructing is very, very good to have as on your resume if you're going to become an SE because you're gonna be doing a lot of tutorials. You're gonna be doing a lot of demos, a lot of presentations. You're gonna be explaining complicated subjects to people. And so IT instructing, you're trying to teach people subnetting and binary hard stuff. You're trying to teach OSPF to someone who's never done routing before. So this is a very good skill to have. And I think he had uh, five years of network engineer. All right. I'm going to stop typing in years because it's it uh, should be understood. All right. So you can kind of see a pattern here. Right. Four, five, six years network engineering, IT instructing. Uh, let's take a look at some of the certs he has. Uh, so before joining Cisco, I had CCNA, CCNP, CISP, blah, 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 et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Let's take a look at his certs if he still lists, it, lists them. CMNA, CCNA, do, do, do. Okay, MCSE, all that good stuff. And I do know that he he had his, he got his CCIE before he joined Cisco, right? which is pretty good. All right. Let's take a look at someone else that I know. Catherine McNamara. Many of you may know Catherine McNamara. She is a co-organizer here at Router Gods, does a lot of good work for us, and has also appeared in David Bombal's famous YouTube video where she went from homeless security guard into Cisco, multiple CCIEs, and just doing a great job right now. Okay, so let's take a look at her education. And she actually also helped me get into Cisco, which is pretty cool how that happened. Okay, Western Governor University, that's pretty good. Skyline, and okay, so Western Governor, so Masters and Bachelors. Masters and a Bachelors. And network administrator, we'll just call that network engineer, security analyst. Uh, so two years, about three years. We'll call that four years. We'll call that uh, seven, let's call it six to seven years. Six to seven years of uh, network engineer, right? All right, so you can see the pattern. Network engineer, five to six years, boom doing projects and also big names under her belt. Westfield is a is a big name. So once you get a big name, St. Joseph, everyone knows St. Joseph. So once you get a, a big name under your belt, it starts looking more attractive. Okay, let's pick someone else. Hugh Fan. let's pick on this guy. Okay, I know that Hugh went to UC Irvine. Yep, UC Irvine, he's got a master's and he's got uh, Cal Poly Pomona bachelor's, right? 
So UC Irvine, Cal Poly Pomona. And let's take a look. Uh, one year, I'm gonna call this network engineer. I'm gonna call that network engineer five, six years. And he was at Zoom Assist 10 years and then he became a director. So let's call that 10 years. Network engineer. Boom. And he did do some pre-sales, Nexus Tech, that type of stuff. And now he's at he's at Cisco. All right. So you can kind of see the you've got bachelors, we got a couple masters degrees, you know, six to seven years. Hugh here before coming to Cisco, 10 years, which is kind of on the on the on the outlier on the long end of, of things, but that, that's okay. And let's pick a final person. Let's pick on Dana Yanch. This guy is super, superstar. Probably has forgotten more about Viptela than I will ever possibly know. So let's take a look at his education. Okay, kind of same as me, double A, right? So two year degree, which is completely fine. He, he got his in network administration. Absolutely fine. Looks like he went through Cisco Networking Academy. So that's, that's pretty good. Let's take a look at his experience. Okay, talking about the big names. He did tech support for a year at Dell. Okay, network system support. So I guess he's working at the college for two years. We'll call this network engineering. So two years, GoDaddy, six months. That's a big name under there. And then Insight, uh, this is kind of pre-sales. So kind of on the lower end of things, but he does have the big name on this guy. So uh, we'll call this, if we add it up, we'll say three years of, three years network engineer and tech support. Okay, so we've picked five people we can get a sense of everyone's path or a somewhat typical path or a range. Education. We have everything from a two-year degree, myself and Dana, absolutely fine. Four-year degrees, all the way up to master's degree, right? Uh, in, in this group of five, in this pool of five, we don't have anyone with no degree. So this is something to think about at least get a two-year degree. At the bare minimum, get a two-year degree. Even better, go to a big name school, but if, if you don't graduate, not a big deal. If you get a master's, awesome. Now, most people do get their master's while working as a network engineer, uh, so that's completely fine. You'll be doing the night classes, it'll be difficult, but, but that's okay. In terms of the certification, most of the people you see here got their CCNP, some like Steven, got their CCIE before becoming an SE. And then the skill. We see a lot of tech support. Uh, a couple of us started tech support. I worked in tech support. Starting in tech support is completely fine. It's a normal progression of IT. Start in tech support, do it for a couple of years. Don't do it more than three years, for God's sakes, uh, unless you just enjoy torture and punishment. Uh, two to three years is just fine for tech support. Then become a network engineer, and you're kind of seeing the, the range here. Three years is kind of on the lower end. Uh, I have seen people do it for two years. Two years, it's, it's gonna be tough doing that transition. Uh, people really look for at least three. Now, if, if you're on the lower end of three years of, of tech support and network engineering, you need to have those big names under your belt. Three years at a big name company, at a knockdown, drag out fight, type of company is worth five to six years at a slower paced, smaller company. And uh, on the high range, we see six to seven, 10 years of network engineering. So that should give you some idea of how to plan your career if you want to become a pre-sales system sales engineer at the big name companies. Hope this this has been a pretty fun video for me. Uh, hope it has been informative or for you. If you have any questions, as always, leave it in the comments. Hit the like button, hit that subscribe button. It really helps me out, helps out the channel. And as always, I hope you're staying safe. Take care, and I'll see you on the next video. Bye.